Are you tired of putting a bunch of different plugins on your master bus just to find out that it sounds like dog shit? <laughs> Sucks! Well, you got an expander, you got a saturator on there, you got an EQ on there, you're doing some crazy stuff with some other stuff, it's widening out, it's getting louder. Why don't you just use this one plugin? If there was one plugin that I could take to a deserted island, this would be the one. It's an oldie, but it's a goodie. Let's get right into it. Plugin of the week. How many times do we have to teach you this lesson, old man? I love the young people. <laughs> Yeah, you guessed it, the Oxford Inflator. I love this plugin, I think it's incredible. It's been around forever, it's by Sonics, um, Sony. Sony Sonics, I don't know. Uh, I think Sonics is Sony. I'm confused by that too. Plugin is amazing. It goes on sale a lot of the times. I think if you're like Black Friday, etc. Um, if you don't know this plugin, then I'm gonna show you how I use this plugin. I'm not gonna sit here and be like, yo, here's the science behind it. And here's, cause dude, I've had those debates before. They're boring. I don't wanna have another boring debate about the Sony Oxford inflator. The curve does this, the effect does that. I don't give a shit. What I'm gonna tell you is how I use it musically on the Master Bus. Let's dive into a track. I'm just starting this track right now and I want, I'll just play a little snippet of it and then I'll show you what the Oxford Inflator is doing on the Master Bus and we'll talk about some stuff because it's fun. That's all you get. You get a little taste of the latest single that I'm working on uh, that'll drop probably next month, okay? Let's talk about what the Oxford Inflator is doing and sort of look at the the GUI, which is kind of stupid, the, the interface, the way it looks. It's really not that pretty. It's been around for quite a while, so it's kind of like, uh, probably needs a little update facelift. But um, here's your input. Everything cool, uh, the cool thing about the Oxford Inflator and what Sonics has done here is you can ho hover under uh, over any control on the GUI and it's going to tell you exactly what it does. Okay. And that's why I'm not going to sit here and bore you with that whole idea. What I'm going to tell you about is kind of how I use this, uh, the effect and the curve. And that's really the biggest stuff here and what they do for me in my ears. So I'm going to bypass this in and out just on this little intro here with the synth and the guitars and drums and everything. Um, so you can kind of just like right away hear what's happening. Um, and then I'll explain kind of what's happening with the effect and the curve and why I'm doing what I'm doing here. And I'll explain the band split as well because I think that's pretty cool. Let me uh, play it and I'll bypass it in and out so you can hear it. So hopefully right away you you hear how it's kind of the perceived loudness of the music and the vocal and everything just kind of pops out of the speakers all of a sudden, right? Um, and what that is, is it's actually a couple things here that's going on. The effect here, uh, which if, if you hover, hover over this, it's going to tell you exactly what it is. But the effect here, the more you do of the effect, the more you're going to get uh, excitement. You're going to get um, expansion. It expands the frequencies, but it also adds like some saturation, which I think is really what you're getting is the harmonic saturation that, that makes things kind of pop on the sides and also makes kind of the uh, the mids, uh, the high mids kind of spitty and like pops them out of the speakers a little bit. And that's what this plugin is really known for. A lot of people overdo this plugin, I think, and they just take it to 100% and they're like, man, it sounds so much better. But really all you're hearing is just more saturation. You're hearing more hot high-end kind of stuff. Probably it, to my ears, it's going to be anywhere from like 3,500 to 8K kind of vibe, right? So it's kind of just like pushing that stuff forward. But the cool thing about the effect that also I like that it does this effect uh, fader here is that it actually pushes things up 
So anything that you have in the mix that has the top in it, it's actually going to push it up. It's going to raise it in the listening position. So I'm monitoring on a three-way system. I can hear things that are high end, like kind of pop up, which is uh, something I use a lot for imaging and putting the vocal in the center. Or maybe I want like the hi-hats and the sprinkly, you know, like synthy stuff uh, to kind of sprinkle up on top. Because as you're mixing, you want to actually use the top and the bottom, right? Like your sub frequencies are at the bottom. They're in the floor. They're shaking in the floor and then you have this top stuff that's up here and then you have the vocal that's kind of centered and in the middle we th we think about imaging when we're mixing records and i think that this is a really great tool for that okay so i'm gonna put this in again uh with the vocal just coming into this little intro part which is kind of a tease for the chorus just listen as i bring the effect up and if you're listening on good headphones or on a, a good monitoring system this is going to be apparent to you but pay attention to how the high end lifts up and how the vocal goes up in the actual frequency frequency and in the imaging of your stereo image. Okay, so check this out. And this is probably the coolest thing about this plugin that I just absolutely love about it. 15 minutes to midnight, baby, and a bloodshot promise in your eye. I'm coming undone. Yeah, I'm coming undone. 15 minutes to midnight, baby, and a bloodshot promise in your eye. So typically what I do with that effect is I pay attention to the vocal, right? Because I'm a mixing engineer and the vocal typically, whether it's a trap record, R&B record, rock record, or something like this, where it's kind of like synth pop, you want the vocal to be centered and fat and thick in the middle. And maybe like, maybe you got some background vocals or something that you want kind of like on the top and in the back. But you know, that's how I mix. I think of like a big like dimension, like I'm mixing in outer space basically. And uh, I'm putting things in their position, right? So that's what this is really great for is it's great for the up and down, but it's also great for bringing things forward and backwards, right? So as you bring more of the effect up, I think it brings it more up and it brings it more out, right? All the high end stuff and the high mids. And then as you bring it down, it kind of brings things centered and lower and it tucks back more. OK, that's kind of the effect to me. So hopefully that makes sense. But that's that's kind of the non-scientific way of of putting it. Let's get into the curve, right? What the curve does. The curve for me is sort of like a high end limiter. OK, the best way I can put it, high end limiter, but also kind of a saturator on the low end. So it kind of uh, it's like when you use tape and you put it at 15 ips or 7.5 ips, you get like this fatness, but you also kind of roll the top off a little bit and it like pushes this big fat boomy stuff up. Right. And that's what this curve does for me to my ears. Of course, you can always hover over it and see, oh, the curve fader, my characteristics, sonics, you know. Uh, but what you're going to do really is it's just going to make it warmer and fatter. And uh, the low end can get out of control really easily with this effect. So I'm going to um, bring this up and down and I'm going to show you how and pay attention to the low end on this part. OK, that's what this is going to do. It's going to push those lows. 15 minutes to midnight, baby, and a bloodshot promise in your eye. I'm coming undone. Yeah, I'm coming undone. Boy, me, girl. Yeah, we're on to something. Pick 15 minutes to midnight, baby, and a bloodshot promise in your eye. I'm coming undone. Yeah, I'm coming undone. Okay, so you can see how this plugin can get so addictive, and you could totally overuse it, right? You start putting it on the master bus, and you start pushing the effect up and the curve up, and then all of a sudden you're you're just you're choking out your limiter. Your limiter's getting hit with all these sonic, you know, harmonic information in the low end and the high end, and and uh, you just got to be really careful. It's about balance, and that's typically like you know something I always pay attention to. I think as a mixing engineer, especially as you get into mastering your own stuff, or you know, you're thinking about sonics or you're thinking about headroom or any of that stuff um the curve of your song like maybe you want to have a smiley curve to it that's what this plugin does really well it gives like that smiley face it gives you that top like nice harmonic stuff and then it gives you that fat thick rich stuff which is awesome okay so now let's talk about the band split here so the band split what it does when you turn it on i don't want to get scientific here but uh inter intermodulation um 
in the distortion and the harmonics. It talks about how it splits it into three frequency bands, right? And the reason it does that is because as you're distorting and harmonics, like you're pushing harmonics and saturation into this complex waveform, um, you're getting intermodulation distortion, which is, it's basically like when you put two and two together, you get a third part, right? Which can also cause kind of uh, notes to sound a little out of tune or whatever, because you're adding more harmonics. Um, so the band split, what that does is it basically says, okay, we're only going to take care of, and you only use this when you have like a lot of high end in your track or a lot of low end, like it's a really thick trap beat or something. I would use the band split, right? Because then you're really focusing on those bands and letting them be um, affected and curved in their own way. So they're not overlapping throughout all the harmonics in all of the um, the complex waveform that is, you know, guitars and, and kick drums and bass and vocals and all that, because you have like all the frequencies there, right? So what this is doing, the band split is it's going, okay, let's split it into three. Let's go lows, mids, and highs, right? And then uh, let's make sure that they're not overlapping and they're not bringing in inner modulation distortion, which could introduce other harmonics. So it's a way to kind of clean it up. And I'll see if I'll see if uh, you can hear it if I just like really go crazy with the effect and curve and then I pop the band split in and out. Maybe you can hear like how it kind of cleans it up. Um, I don't really need it on this track, but I'll, I'll play it for you. 15 minutes to midnight, baby, and a bloodshot promise in your eye. I'm coming undone. Yeah, I'm coming undone. 15 minutes to midnight, baby, and a bloodshot promise in your eye. So what I hear it a lot in is the low end. If you go back and rewind and you play that again, listen to the low end and how that's changing the low end. It's sort of like folding on itself um, when the band split is off. But of course, I don't have the curve up very much on this mix. I'm usually like right around here, you know, like in this area. So I only have it like six or seven. Um, but if you really start pushing that curve and you get that more low end in there, uh, then the band split's really nice because what it'll do is it'll make sure that you're not sort of folding over the distortion, which is the inner modulation distortion, right? Hopefully that that like kind of covers the basis of what the inflator does. Um, it's an amazing tool. I love it. I use it on almost every single record I mix and master or even produce because it's such a fun tool to produce with. Um, it definitely adds more, uh, more loudness, perceived loudness, but it also kind of adds some more gain as well. And you can push the input a little bit to get more color. Um, you can hover over these things and just kind of like see what they do. Clip is zero. You know, you can read about that when the clip zero dB button is selected, internal processing levels are restricted to the equivalent of normal, normal digital maximum, right? So you can just kind of see all this and, um, you know, this stuff can clip. These are, these are 64 bit plugins. You know, they have, they have a lot of headroom and everything in them. That's it. That's the whole Oxford inflator. Go inflate your mixes, make them crazy. Um, but be careful because it's addictive and you know if your ear's not tuned and your room's not tuned and you're listening on shitty monitors or whatever you'll overdo it i promise if you like this video share it with someone you know that's all we ask that's all i care about is more people get the information if you ever need any mixing or mastering you know where to find me bradley hd on ig also drop a comment in here uh if you really like this video and ask any questions